Welcome back to Honored Madman. We've got a quick one for you guys today. So Metal Gear Solid has long had a history of crossovers. Everything from Tony Hawk to Ape Escape, even Monster Hunter, just to name a few. That's one thing that Metal Gear Solid used to do especially well was that it enjoyed being a video game. It never took itself too seriously and it loved to interact with other video game franchises or characters from the video game realm. Something that's beautifully depicted by all of Snake's codec calls in the Smash Bros games. Each one is unique based upon the character he's fighting and they're all pretty entertaining. Sadly though, they haven't been updated since Brawl. But there's still quite a bit of good ones in there, and they're all voiced by David Hayter, so that's great. And they even got most of his support staff from Metal Gear Solid 1 to return just for those codec calls, so it's definitely worth checking out. Now, admittedly, this isn't the same kind of crossover as that. It's also not the same type of crossover as I previously mentioned, like the Ape Escape, Tony Hawk, or Monster Hunter ones. This is actually more of a homage to some of the core tropes of the Metal Gear Solid games. And honestly, who knows if this was intentional or not, I tend to think it was. And I know it has to be something that at least a couple Metal Gear Solid fans noticed while playing Wind Waker. But today I want to talk about that one time where a specific Legend of Zelda game briefly turned into Metal Gear Solid for a whole little section, just minus a torture sequence. In one of the early sections of the beloved game, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, Link finds himself separated from his weapon while infiltrating a rather heavily guarded Dark Fortress in order to rescue some hostages, namely his sister. He initially manages to sneak into the island headquarters via a cannon fired from a pirate vessel. And as previously stated, this was a heavily guarded stronghold, complete with searchlights operated by bokoblins and round-the-clock patrols from moblins. Ironically, the only friends you'll find in this place are rats. Now, since Link is without his weapon, he'll have to use whatever weapons he can find in order to get the job done, which is a very Metal Gear Solid concept. Especially when this came out, I mean, at the time, I believe Metal Gear Solid was the only game with a focus on on-site weapons procurement. Nowadays, it's a staple of most stealth games. In fact, most uh, hardest difficulties of stealth games will just start you out with no loadout. I know the Splinter Cell game, at least Double Agent, does that if you pick the hardest difficulty. So yeah, it would go on to become a trope of all stealth games, but at least when this game came out, it felt very Metal Gear Solid-like. But anyway, once he's in the Forsaken Fortress, Link is advised by Tetra via the Legend of Zelda version of a codec call to use the Boko sticks that the Bokoblins use as weapons to take them out in order to knock out the spotlights. In fact, throughout this entire infiltration, Tetra continuously hits you up through the Gossip Stone to give Link advice on how to proceed. Now once Link uses this simple but effective strategy to take out all the searchlights, he then has to contend with the Moblin patrols. Now these guys you can't take out with Boko Stick, mainly because there aren't any around and you can't bring them through doors, but you're forced to sneak around them. Luckily for Link, this is one of the few games where he's able to go prone and crawl around. Definitely another trope of the Metal Gear Solid games and stealth games in general, well with the exception of Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker that is. But while that in itself feels very Metal Gear Solid-ish, there is in fact a more MGS way to get around these sentries, and that is to use a barrel as cover. While it's not quite a cardboard box, the barrel is a good way to avoid being sniffed out by the moblins. Now sure, you could just as easily crawl around without much issue, also very MGS, but why miss out on the opportunity to hide underneath a barrel? This is also the only time in the game where Link's able to do this, as any other time he won't hide inside the barrel, he'll just pick it up and all you can do is throw it or set it back down. Now, if you do happen to get caught, the Moblin will throw his lantern at you, but he won't kill you because you're unarmed. Instead, he throws you in a jail cell, presumably to await some kind of interrogation, or, if this really is a Metal Gear Solid homage, torture. But since this is a Zelda game, there is no torture sequence, which is a sort of a staple of all the Metal Gear Solid games. In almost every entry, Snake is captured towards the uh, mid or end point of the game, and tortured while you, the player, will have to button mash to keep him alive. After which, he's tossed in the cell and you have to figure out some kind of way to escape. Now, if you don't figure out fast enough, you have to go through another torture sequence. And, of course, that would not make it into any type of Metal Gear Solid homage in a Zelda game. But it does toss you into a cell that you will have to escape from. But after you sneak past these guys, you'll eventually find your sword. Which is just in time, as you're going to have to fight a mini-boss in the form of a green Bokoblin. While he's not exactly the cyborg ninja Frank Yeager from Metal Gear Solid, he does also wield a blade, and hopefully that's my biggest reach for this video. I do think that there was some Metal Gear Solid homages intended, and sure, some of my uh, claims are probably reaches, but I still wanted to make a fun little video about this section, because it's a very unique and memorable section for a Legend of Zelda game, and I do know that the sequels Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks 
also followed it up with some stealth sections, at least if I remember correctly. But who knows, maybe all the things I said in the video are just reaches on my part and no homages were intended at all. But with that out of the way, let's have our outro and some final thoughts. So this was just a fun video I wanted to do for quite a while and my Peace Walker video isn't quite done yet but it's probably going to end up being my next big one. But before that I have a very interesting video about the Worm Faces and Fia coming out probably I'm hoping either tomorrow or the next day. And I'm also finally going to get to the Fallout stuff. I'm working on porting all my Fallout footage over from my Xbox to my computer and it's actually not as complicated as I thought it would be but it's just uh, tedious as hell but I don't want to bore you guys with the details. With that being said I I will see you next time, and as always, have a good one. See ya. Oh, but underneath that cold metal exterior beats the heart of a woman. <laughs>